nation is power. You talk about the climate being perfect for a civil war. Can you speak to that and how you think we can stop it? Well, this this division that's being propagated by the media, um, I, I've never, you know, I've been involved with doing media, talking head stuff since it started like, well, 1995, 94. You've been on every captain, Carlos the Jackal. And I was on ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, yeah, I've seen CNN. you on Nightline, I think, like 20 years ago. So, yeah, you've been everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I did Nightline probably eight or nine times. So, and then in my, and then this, so going back almost 30 years, I have never seen such a dishonest display. I mean, deliberate dishonesty on the part of media types, uh, and uh, particularly at MSNBC and at CNN, but it's, it's really going throughout the media. This is a short segment, one more long segment with Larry C. Johnson. We've got to get back on more often. You know, the best way to find him is just Google uh, Larry C. Johnson, Semper, Sick Semper Tyrannus, and the Committee of Correspondence. You can read some of the articles there. We should post some of his great articles. They're excellent. Uh, but Larry C. Johnson joins us. And again, I like to go back to who two years ago, two and a half years ago, was laying all this out. Obviously, he has a lot of sources. He didn't want to give away anything classified, but he was saying, I'd look at this, I'd look at that. Judge Napolitano said that, it got ignored. I said that, Colonel Schaefer said that. I had the former head of technical NSA on. William Benny, he'd just come right out and say it. Uh, and so now it's all here, and I just sit back. It's not like I want to fight with the Democrats of the deep state and the Republican blue bloods, but, but just the brazenness and the arrogance is really, I gotta say, frightening. It's like having a loose cannon inside your house that could run your kids over. Gut level, where do you think this is all going if if Trump doesn't really pressure Barr? But but I think Barr realizes how dangerous this is. This is truly rogue, insane groups. So, so, so I think Trump has just turned it over to Barr. What do you think? Yeah, well, no, it, it, he was smart to select uh, Bill Barr. Uh, I, when I was at state in the counterterrorism office, we worked closely with Barr, then who was attorney general in 1990 and 91 period uh, on the Pan Am 103 bombing. And, and Bill Barr played a very critical role in helping get that investigation underway and the suspects for it uh, actually uh, prosecuted and uh, arrested. Uh, he was also instrumental, I know, in doing some things with DEA at the time. Uh, very One of my former business partners was uh, in dealing with Barr. So, so you're saying Barr's he gets, he gets 35,000 foot and 10 feet. He gets a big picture. Yeah. yeah, no, he's, he's smart. He understands how the government works, but he's also got, got a lot of integrity. He's not one who out to play political games. He understands that the law is there to be applied fairly and justly. And, and how big was it a few weeks ago when he said, no, there was spying. It's admitted there was spying. Yeah. yeah. You know, whatever you want to call it, counter, you know, surveillance. Uh, if, if there could be legal spying, but uh, the issue is, and, and he got right to the heart of it, was the spying on the Trump campaign done legally or illegally? And I think the evidence will show very clearly it was done illegally. Does that go I mean, to motive uh, to, to change the election, or does it go to how they did it with fake intelligence? Uh, with both. Uh, the fact that, you know, the, the disconnect of Christopher Steele's dossier being used as the justification for the FISA warrant, and it's being used as justification at the same time that the FBI is firing Christopher Steele as a clandestine informant. How in the world do you get rid of a clandestine informant because basically you're saying you no longer trust them, but then you go before a federal judge and swear that their information is valid and verified? I mean, that's just a disconnect that that shows bad faith on the part of people like Comey, Sally Yates, Loretta Lynch, all members of the senior parts of Department of Justice and the FBI. Uh, and the fact that they did not verify that and yet continued to go back and reference it as justification for spying on Carter Page, Carter Page is a bit of a buffoon, but Carter Page did not do anything to jeopardize or hurt the security of uh, the United States. And the thing people forget, they keep saying, oh, Russia interfered in our 2016 election. Uh, are people morons? 
the United States and the Russians and the former Soviet Union Everybody does have been spying on each other for 80 plus years, engaged in a whole variety of intelligence collection activities designed to influence public opinion. So grow up, stop acting like a bunch of babies and pretending that this thing was somehow new and different. It was not new, it was not different. Final segment with Larry C. Johnson, decorated uh, CIA leader, I'm not gonna go over his whole bio, uh, but uh, he goes on a lot of national television, and he, but most importantly, he, he laid out two years ago on the show and other shows what was really going on, the illegal spying, the attempted coup. But I know that the deep staters uh, over the Carnegie Endowment, the Ford Endowment, uh, the Stay Behind Networks, to use their words, the embeds, um, listen and watch this show and then they've wondered how we knew what they were doing what they were up to well i interviewed all the experts i've studied history obama signed this countering f uh, disinformation and foreign propaganda act they then called me a russian agent in congressional hearings in the house armed services committee i then started uh, enjoying uh, the uh, counter espionage operations they were running against me because i'm a loyal american uh, and so i really got put in the deep end even though i'd historically studied this i got to experience it and I couldn't believe how their agents and their operatives were like mental patients. They actually shook in fear around me and believed I was the devil. So we've got a big leg up on these people. They have mental patients, folks. They don't have serious focused people. And I'm not claiming I'm just as a regular organic citizen, Mr. Tough Guy, but I mean, I know how to tie my shoelaces. I don't, you know, sit there and, you know, get the shakes when I gotta do something. And so I'm not saying, oh, we're superior. I'm actually scared that the Democrats in the deep state, the ones that did this, are so unprofessional, so scared, so arrogant, so pathetic, because they're scared, but they're also super arrogant. So I know a big part of you in counterterrorism and as one of their you know, top guys have to know what the establishment's doing or your enemy and understand their psychology. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm more scared because they're so incompetent. They've been caught. There's no way even Trump, if he wanted to cover this up, can. They, they, I think they've got to be prosecuted. But then in that process, they've never sued for peace. They just keep attacking, attacking. So Trump's even more forced to. And then I'm afraid they're going to do things that could, could you know, sabotage U.S. military operations. I already talked to Pentagon folks that said early on that, that somebody was leaking where special operations was going to make Trump look bad in raids against uh, ISIS. Uh, and so that's, I think, turned the military completely against Obama and Hillary. But that's what I'm saying, though. How many of these things, how many Air Force cadet commandants do you have to get caught, you know, staging false flag race war? How much do we have to put up with these crazy people? So correct me if I'm wrong, and then get into what is their mindset and what is your warning to them? Because you're really talking to the deep state, rogue elements on the show, as you know. That's why you were openly earlier saying, get rid of this person, get rid of that person. They're watching, they're listening. So maybe like, like you're the FBI bullhorning into a group of bank robbers, give up, you'll never get out. I mean, what do you say to these people to get them to stop? But it's important for your listeners to understand, Alex, that this, is entire, this relies entirely upon the veil of intelligence. So the intelligence that was initially collected by the British and then later collected by NSA and CIA, it was all contrived. It wasn't based out of actual actions. Instead, it was done as sort of a, as a pretext or designed to paint Trump as having interactions with the Russians. Sure, to d discredit uh, the election and, and, and cover for their criminal activity. Yeah, and, and, and so we, we, and yet within this, the FBI participated as well. When you look at the case of uh, Felix Sater, for example, who was played a critical role in the Trump Tower Moscow project. In fact, he was the one instigating and doing the negotiation, encouraged meetings with Putin. Once you realize he had been an FBI informant since 1998, and his status as an informant, he was signed up by none other than Andrew Weissman. Now, that's not just a mere coincidence. So what they counted on was they could justify their actions as a counterintelligence investigation because they had, quote, intelligence that was leading them to do this. But what they didn't admit to is that that intelligence was actually produced in response to requests from the Clinton campaign initially and people affiliated with the Clinton campaign to come up and start doing opposition research on Donald Trump, but then to add the sort of the added flavor of having it appear as if it was legitimate intelligence. And you saw that in that clip uh, 
that was played with Evelyn Farkas, the former DOD official, where she said, we got all this intelligence showing these contacts with Russia. And again, she was lying in that what they were not telling the, the people listening to her is that those contacts with Russians were staged, staged by people like, by groups like uh, military intelligence, MI6. And the Explain British. that to people. These were double and triple agents, well known to everybody, who they would then call Russians who were really Western intelligence or cutouts making contact with people who never made deals. You know, I'm so proud that they even have to admit no American would take the money, including me. No, no, well, no American they, would take the money. They couldn't get anybody who was a nationalist to sell out. Right. And, you know, take the case of uh, George Papadopoulos. He was approached by a professor, Joseph Massoud, and Massoud is characterized, in, even in this, uh, this very disingenuous Mueller report, as a Russian agent, when in fact, Massoud has uh, long, extensive contacts with both the British MI6 and the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. He was a Western intelligence asset. He was not working for the Russians. He was working for Western intelligence agencies, and yet he was the one that presented George Papadopoulos with, hey, opportunities to meet with Putin, and hey, opportunities to get involved with Russia. And that was a deliberate pro uh, uh, provocative or provocation. It's like baiting a hook and throwing it out there, hoping that the fish will bite so you can reel them in and then blame the fish for getting caught. Sure, it's total entrapment, and so none of it worked. And, and why do you think Mueller then had to back down? Because he came up so empty? Yeah, because there was no there there. I mean, this, it, you know, I was saying two years ago that this was a lie. And this was based on nothing, that this was an actual contrived effort. Uh, and everyone said, oh, it's crazy and a conspiracy theorists. But there was no there there. And when you when you, people begin to understand that, the, 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 apart from uh, Felix Sater, who is a 20-year FBI informant working in the Trump Tower since 2003, uh, Henry Greenberg, another one that made approaches to Michael Caputo and to Roger Stone, was also an FBI informant. When you begin to realize that the FBI was actively using informants to try to entrap Trump people. And as and you said, everybody knows that who's informed. You read the report, they act like these in, that are known informants are, 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 are FSB agents. It's insane. So right. I know you don't like to grandstand, but I'm serious. In the time we have, sir. Larry C. Johnson, former CIA counterterrorism, what would you say to the deep state? Or what do you think they're thinking right now? They've got to know the walls are closing in. They kept saying that about Trump. No, they're closing in on them. Uh, I don't think they fully realize or appreciate that the walls are going to completely close in on them. I think they're counting on the fact that they've still got some buddies and some friends on the inside that will help deflect and defuse this. But uh, it's incumbent upon Trump, as I noted earlier, release the documents, declassify this information, expose to the American public. Start the prosecution the and they'll fall like dominoes. Yeah, these are traitors. There's no other, these are genuine traitors. People like Jim Clapper, John Brennan, they are absolute traitors. They were engaged with sedition and they tried to disrupt a legitimately elected president simply because they didn't like his politics or his policies but he was voted for by the American people, not by you him. know. You, you're a you're a. But when I say conservative, what you say is conservative. I've been watching you on the air for six, seven, eight years, and you did accurately lay all this out. But and I know you got to go. Oh, but you just saying they're traitors. This is absolute traitors. We've got to do something. You're, you're totally right, and I just can't believe we've gotten in this position. Yeah, it's no. This, this is this is the stuff that civil wars are made of, and. Uh, the, the, you know, what, what has made America, you know, America's had its flaws, and there have been mistakes over the years. You know, we saw it with the Hollywood blacklist period. And I never thought we would see the Democratic left engage in the same tactics that they accused uh, and uh, the, the Republicans of doing in the 1940s and early 50s. But here we are with the Democrats being more McCarthyite than anything that Joseph McCarthy did back in the day. Larry C. Johnson's a highly decorated, respected. Uh, former CIA operative commander, um, counterterrorism specialist. I'm not going to go over his whole awards and decorated past, but he's one of the most cogent, focused, accurate people the last two plus years that I was watching saying what was really going on, what was going to come out. And again, I'm not one of these people that dreams of civil war and going out and, and, and getting the, le the, the lefties. I mean, I'm not even a right winger. I'm just a populist. But 
when I go out in public, sometimes in Austin, and most people shake my hand, but others say, we're going to kill you, we're going to get you. They, they attack me. They think they're allowed to do that. They're at a crazed level. And then I get all these FBI reports. I don't just believe FBI reports. Some are true, some aren't. I've, well, I'll just say it. We've infiltrated an, uh, Antifa groups. Everybody knows that. Well, they're like, we're going to put people in camps and we're going to have a race war and we're going to link up with MS-13. I said that over a year ago. The media freaked out. And then now you've got other CIA former analysts like Kevin Shipp basically saying everything that our guest Larry C. Johnson saying that they're planning a violent overthrow. They want it. They're buying full page ads saying it. I don't think Antifa is going to lead this overthrow of Trump, but I think they could be the trigger for real civil unrest. And I just think if we know this is coming, we have a duty to stop it. This isn't free speech. So you talk about the climate being perfect for a civil war. Can you speak to that and how you think we can stop it? Well, this this division that's being propagated by the media, um, I, I've never, you know, I've been involved with doing media, talking head stuff since it started like, well, 1995, 94. You've been on every captain. Carlos the Jackal. And I was on ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, yeah, I've CNN. I've seen you on Nightline, I think like 20 years ago. So yeah, you've been everywhere. Yeah. I did Nightline probably eight or nine times. So. And then in my and then this so going back almost 30 years, I have never seen such a dishonest display. I mean, deliberate dishonesty on the part of media types, uh, and it, particularly at MSNBC and at CNN. But it's it's really going throughout the media. No one's actually trying to be honest about covering the stories. Now, the saving grace is this: talk radio like your show and like Rush Limbaugh's show. If you, if you compare Rush Limbaugh's show to all the major media, as many people listen to Rush Limbaugh as watch ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News on any given night. Think about that. The total numbers that, that are just listening to Rush as an example are, are comparable to what's going on the television. And yes, by the way, before they censored us, we were at that same level. Yeah. So that's what I say. Your show and other shows... It, 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 it gets out there and it counters the argument. They can't control it. They want to try to control it. The way they try to control it is by destroying you, by destroying your reputation, and by trying to characterize you as a complete crank. So, I mean, that's that's how they do it. I've been called a complete conspiracy theorist. And No, I saw it. You've been totally vindicated. So what does the corporate media do as they lose all credibility now? They, they're they losing the little bit of ratings they had are gone. Well, and then they ignore you. So they ignore this story. Uh, and it's just... But it, what, what's important in all of this is that we continue to hammer on the truth. Get the truth out there, get the facts out there, get the documents out there. Because at the core in America, there are people who are willing to be persuaded by facts, but they need to be educated and they need to be taught. And I don't think- I totally to agree. Let me say this in closing. Okay. Here's my concern. I think if criminal elements, because people say, well, you got the CIA on, but you say the CIA is bad. No, it's like anything. There's good people, bad people. Do you follow the constitution? Do you not? It, 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 it's which side you're on. I think you're on the Americana side, just on the free market side, on, on the Constitution side. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. But people don't seem to understand. If the deep state criminal elements continue to be this wild, they're going to lead into something where people are forced to do really drastic things. And I think they've taken our, our, our calmness and our restraint as weakness. And I've studied history. I look at all the tea leaves here, Larry. I, I, I mean, I say to the establishment, the corrupt elements of it, this way leads doom. I mean, I, what do you see in your crystal ball in closing if they're able to trigger the race war, the civil war that are in WikiLeaks that the Democrats are dreaming of, that, that Netflix is pushing, that they, that they think is going to turn all this around? I don't think they can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I think they can only summon the whirlwind that will destroy them, and I don't want to be in the middle of that. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I think if history teaches us anything, it's going to require some sort of external crisis to bring us back together. And at this point, we're, we're still on a collision course where the divisions that are being encouraged and promoted by many in the media and many within Hollywood, uh, that uh, they're, they're creating a mem of, of a deep, dark division in America. And yet, at the core in America, there's a good heart. There is. And there are people who are willing to come together. And I, I still believe in and trust that that element can be touched and, and coalesced. And plus, the reality is most of them have guns and the folks advocating this other don't. So, Well, here's my uh, final question. I really appreciate your time and I hope you write a book so we can plug it. You're really a selfless patriot out there, I guess, for everybody's own interest. But you saw Brennan and Clapper, I'm sure, three weeks ago, do the tour saying, okay, we did watch Trump. 
because you know he's a Russian or whatever, still putting that lie out. We were ordered by Obama uh, declaring the executive privilege, executive authorization. I think that shows that they know they're caught and they're desperate now. I think that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a very big deal. Clapper was sort of the brains in chief on the intel side behind this, not Brennan, but Brennan was a willing participant and was an enthusiastic participant. The, Brennan's failing is just not very bright. He's sort of a dummy and always has been just a mediocre intellect, but likes to think that he's really smart. But Clapper was over all 17 agencies. He was really able to. Yeah, Clapper, Clapper is a much more devious, devious character and uh, was, <coughs> excuse me, instrumental in, in helping. Who does uh, he work uh, for from your sources or what makes him tick? I mean, I mean, I mean, we know that Brennan's a communist and just is an idiot. Well, what makes Clapper tick? Clapper is just a, a very much a self-server and then serving his own own interests. And he, he figured that there was some political benefit to be derived by hitching his wagon to the Hillary Clinton train. Uh, and, and, but that has uh, that's failed him. It's How could they out. get themselves out of this? I keep saying last question. You're a smart guy, though. How do they it, couldn't they sue for peace with Trump? But I guess they can't be trusted. No, they will. Suing for peace won't be an option. What they're going to try to do is claim that all of that, if Trump goes forward with this, he's going to damage U.S. intelligence and U.S. security by exposing intelligence sources and methods. They're going to try to hide, hide behind that and play that card. So bottom line, we're in for some major fireworks. I would call this the most critical time in U.S. history since its founding. I think that's an accurate statement? Yeah, no, I think so. The next three months are going to be extremely crucial because the report from Inspector General Horowitz is coming out, and then Trump is supposed to start declassifying all of this information. And when it comes, it's going to be a flood. All right, Larry C. Johnson, I, I wish you, uh, I mean, I, I know you linked some sites that have your work. How do people find you? You're a smart guy. Yeah, I, I blog at Pat Lang's blog, uh, Six Emperor Tyrannus, as you pointed out. Uh, Pat uh, used to be the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency's Middle East Division. He set up the Arabic program at West Point. He is really one of the leading scholars in the United States on U.S. Arab relations. And uh, so I'm just proud to be uh, able to write at his blog. So, Six Semper Tyrannus, Six Semper Tyrannus, that's Latin, folks. Larry C. Johnson, thank you for all the time, sir. God bless you. Okay, thank you, Alex. Bye bye. Thank you. There, there's no doubt, folks, we're all in this together now. This is crazy town, crazy town, crazy town. They all went on the news and said two and a half years ago they spied on Trump. They had the proof he was a Russian. Then they said they didn't do it. They've been spying on me. It came out in the news. And again, I go back to it. When you get around their operatives, they're like mental patients. They're like SJWs with guns.